Yes. In Australian cinemas, May 18, Limbo tells the story of an unsolved murder in Cooper PD and an emotionally scarred detective's efforts to put right some of the wrongs that have haunted the victim's family. I think it's Ivan Sen's best film, and I'm totally aware that he directed Tumala and Goldstone and Mystery Road and Beneath Clouds. Maybe I'm wrong. Let's ask him. Ivan Sen, welcome to Screen Watching, mate. Hey, oh, thanks for having me, mate. <laughs> It's good to have you. You wear a lot of hats on Limbo, director, writer, uh, cinematographer, editor, a few more, if I believe the credits. Um, yep. Are you happy with the way it turned out? Is it your best film? Uh, I was just saying to someone the other day that I'm I'm probably the most satisfied with Limbo than all of my other films, any of my other films. Satisfied in the sense that I kind of achieved what I was heading for going for yeah excellent and it's certainly all up there on the screen mate i think it's a wonderful film uh for the listeners and the viewers the the cold case murder of an indigenous girl and the local police's half-hearted investigation reveals racism and intolerance towards the region's first nations people um in your experience how far detached from our country's reality is a is a situation like that how how easy was it to pull from um your past and your people's past. Oh, pretty easy because it's all all from reality, mate. It's it's a, just a manifestation of reality, and um, that's why I, I I really enjoy making film and narrative films, um, and presenting them in some kind of art for as some kind of art form because you you get to you get to you know you choose details from reality and then you put them together and in, and in, in, into a yarn into a story and um mm. into something that people can kind of understand and be entertained by in, in, to some degree and um yeah it's 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 all from reality you know everything i mean it's hard not to make something that doesn't have a real connection somewhere along the line yeah but uh but the the this story has been pulled from all kinds of areas of my family and um also from a lot of indigenous families around Australia who have who have experienced um, um, the justice Australian justice system when they are uh, victims of crime and and the apathetic response and poor response from authorities. I I love in the film how you barely give the police a look in. There's, I know you've cited In the Heat of the Night as an influence, and, and but that film had Rod Steiger's very belligerent sheriff as a sort of a thematic arc, a, a bridging arc. In your Cooper PD, you know, you, you barely see the cops, and I think that's the way it should be. I, they, they shouldn't be part of this story at this stage, should they? Right, it's about a cop. It's the main guy's a cop. Oh, <laughs> sure, yes, of course, the main guy's a cop. But he's very much in between, isn't he? He's he's such he's 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 such an interesting character. You actually forget he's a cop. I think <laughs> that's all very true. Yeah, and when he does talk to a a uniformed officer, he, he puts him in his place very quickly. So yeah, you're right. It's it's it is about a cop, but it's um. <laughs> it's good that you didn't sort of indulge the local but, constabulary. But, but, yeah, too much. yeah, the local cops. Yeah, you don't want to see them. You know, we we've. Simon Baker plays the 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 cop and and he is the symbol of 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 justice system you know and uh, all and all of the intricate details that are kind of broken with it, with it. It's great to see him play that deeper sort of character actor type. I've always thought he's a character actor in a leading man's body, and he's and his career's always sort of struggled with that a little bit. I think Travis is the sort of role I've been waiting for him to play for twenty odd years. So, how far from how far from what you wrote uh, did you allow him or encourage him to explore? Tell me about working with him. Oh, look, he's 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 fantastic. We we both had very similar ideas most of the time to do with, with the story and the character and um and yeah we were just talking i don't i don't think we ever had a fight or okay. a disagreement really on set we were just both feeling very safe in what we were doing because i trusted him and and uh, he trusted me his uh, his addiction as it's played out in the film is a a challenging path for an actor to go down and for for you to introduce in a your, your lead character who you hope your audience to um to side with uh, was that always in the script 
Oh, look, I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, initially, he was a diabetic. And um, really? <laughs> early on, right? And, um, but, you know, he, he was still a similar type of character. He, he was still kind of pretty dusty. And um, when Simon read the draft, he, he actually mistakenly thought that, it, that he was taking drugs. Ah. I thought, oh, good idea, mate. And he said, yeah, I think that might work. And said, I said, it's going to work. And so that's how we work. You know, we, Simon will see something from another angle that I didn't see. And then I'll take it on board. And uh, yeah, and, and likewise for him, you know. It's um, it's a wonderful cast you've got together, Rob Collins and Natasha Wangani. They're, they're brilliant actors in their parts. And I do want to focus just briefly on the, the next generation actors, the two girls and, and the teenage boy. And particularly there's a scene where the, the girl asks, are you here to find Aunt Charlotte? And it's as if she's hoping, there's something about that line that made me think she's hoping for a new kind of life for her family will come along if, if the disappearance is solved. There's hope in this story, isn't there? Oh yeah, yeah. I think um, there's always hope, mate. There's always hope, and there's yeah. they're damaged people who kind of, I think, find some hope in each other in, to some degree, you know, and yeah. some kind of connection. And, um, they're all they're all damaged goods, and just by spending time with each other, and 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 Simon's character, Travis, spending time with that family, and and knowing that his own family is is a big mess kind of inspires him to to do something i i think for his own family in the future but also um help this family as much as he can within the constraints of the whole situation which brings me to just one of the most beautiful scenes i've seen in a film for a long time and that's and i'll just call it the hug yeah the impact of human contact and I'll, I'll probably mention a couple of scenes here and i don't want to give away any spoilers but the the impact of human contact in these people's lives is so profound at that moment it, it softens the film so wonderfully i think you even allow yourself a, a the only fade in the film it, it's between into the next scene off his face and it's it's such a beautiful piece of film language so um there's there's true emotion bubbling between the beneath the surface here yeah um it's a it's an interesting thing. It's um the 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 sense of intimacy in a in an environment or a moment where where you don't really expect it to happen and don't expect how it will make you feel either. Um yeah. and that is the only dissolve in the film. Um and uh it was just a, an aesthetic thing that felt right and it dissolves through the to actually the the dirt hills of, of where the holes are, where where the girl could be, you know, possibly be. So mm. um, it's all this kind of symbolism and intimacy kind of wrapping up. And, you know, it's hard to talk about because if I could talk about it, I'd write it down into a book and not make a film. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, it's, well, it's beautifully told in, in the film. It, it was just, just such a lovely scene. There's one other scene I want to ask you about, and then this could be hard to talk about without spoiling too much. Rob's character encounters a dingo, Charlie encounters a dingo while digging for opal, and he speaks in his Indigenous language to the to the animal. Can you reveal what he says without revealing too much of the character? Because it didn't come with subtitles, not on the link I watched anyway. Yeah. No, that's and a I... interesting. That's a, that was actually, there was a cut of the film where there were subtitles there, but originally in the script, there's the audience are not aware of what he's saying. Yeah. And um, it's just up to them to kind of, get a feeling of what he's saying and um and sure. and subtitling the the language i felt because i didn't subtitle any of the indigenous language in the film um consciously as well because i, I just felt like it's kind of a more truthful thing just to let let it flow as we're a fly on the wall and we're watching this moment you know mm -hmm. and we're not getting any assistance we get of understanding of the, the language has to come from the characters not from me as a filmmaker writing it on the screen sure. it's kind of a it's, a it's a level of um level of filmmaking which i think is something that i'm pushing towards where i'm i'm not 
feeding the audience everything that they want, you know. Um, and and I think, you know, I think it's a lot of the audience will have a, a reasonable idea of what he's saying to the dog, um, you know, it, it's kind of in his in his um, motion of, of, of his of his voice. And yeah. I think it's kind of might destroy it a bit if I say what he's saying. No, exactly. No, I agree. No, I don't want you to give anything away, but just that explanation sort of puts it in some context for, yeah. for those of us who've seen it. Yeah, the um, thing, the difference with that scene is that the dog can't tell us what he's saying, you know? <laughs> well, there's your next there's your next big sort of, uh, you need like, to do okay, a, ba okay. a babe style you know, movie with a talking what, dog. Tell us what he's saying. And the dingo's like, what the hell are you talking about, mate? I'm just here looking for food. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Then he runs off. That's uh, a great scene. Uh, <laughs> finally, mate, I, I want to ask, I, I, in reading up on you before, a lot of the interviews when the film went to Berlin led with why black and white, but it's an aesthetic that that you've used all the way back to your afters, short, warm strangers, and again for Dreamland, which you know I love. I, I think for me as a film sort of person, it helps position Limbo as a, a descendant of that sort of great era of film noir. What were the other upsides of, of shooting in black and white for you? And the film looks stunning. The, there's a couple of moments, and I'm going to keep talking here because I'm. it's all in the front of my head. Um, there's moments where the harshness of Simon's face and his skin and the tough life that he's he's been through almost blends with the sort of the rock walls of the background. It's such a beautiful use of greys and blacks and whites. I, I don't know why they don't shoot more films in black and white, but um, what, what were some of the other upsides of, of shooting in black and white for you? Oh, look, it, it, oh, geez, there's so many things, you know, it's not just one thing. It's, um, it, it's, it's lack of color, I think, um, allows you to focus more on the characters and in this setting. And it's such a strong color too. It emotionally affects you out there. You know, this red ground is really, really strong. And, and, um, it's, it's also white, um, and red and, and without that emotion, um, keeping you company and making you f feel kind of a warmth you feel I think you feel colder as an audience member and you're looking for more connection which you go looking for through the the characters and connecting more with with their their position in the story and so I think it helps focus the audience funnels them into into the, the minds of the characters and the story and um, Cooper Pedes also lends itself um, tonally to present black and white um, in a very strong way because it has has the white dirt on the ground, um, the minerals in the dirt in combination with with the the holes in the ground and and the caves and the blacks, the shadows, and um, and then bringing in production design elements to to add to that contrast as well. Um, and as well as that, they're, they're, these people are all in their own limbo and it's like they're all living in a memory, like a faded memory. And I feel the black and white helps give this feeling of, of you kind of gives it a timeless feeling of, of memory where you, you, it's kind of set now, but it feels like it could be in the past as well. And also adding in the design element of the 1965 Dodge Phoenix. Oh, oh, no. What a beautiful piece of machinery. <laughs> I, I don't think we've seen a, a car maybe in an Australian film that's been highlighted such in such a way <laughs> um you've made a, a wonderful wonderful film um it's it's a powerful piece of cinema and um like i said at the start of the interview um i, I think it's the best thing you've done so it's in cinemas may 18 ivan sen thank you so much for, for joining us on screen watching it's so good to hear you talk about movies i, I really appreciate your time no thanks for having me all right mate